This is a lesson on relating fractions and decimals to division. So uh, this lesson starts with an explore. So uh, I will read the problem and then you'll pause the video and play again once you have solved. So it says James has 11 apples to share equally with a friend. How many apples will each person get? Try to do this two different ways. How will you record your answer? So notice that um, 11 doesn't divide equally by 2, so you need to figure out how many they'll have. You might draw a picture, you might use just plain math, you might find a different way. Whatever it is, try to find two ways. Play, play the video again once you've found them. Okay, so I've drawn 11 apples. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So what I could do, uh, one strategy is... Um, I could just start counting um, from either side and giving one to the friend and one to James. So, uh, here we go. So this one could be for James. This one is for his friend. James, friend. There's three for James, three for friend. Three for James, three for friend. Three for James. Oh, hang on. I guess we need to count up. That's now five for James, five for friend, and we have one left. Um, and if we want equal amounts, all we need to do is cut it in half. So we cut that apple and they can have equal amounts. They now have uh, one, two, three, four, five apple, full apples, and then they each get half of an apple. Now as a decimal, half of an apple would be 0 0.5. So James would get 5.5. And his friend could get 5.5. Okay, you may have done this uh, other ways, and you should have found at least two ways. Um, we might look at those when we further on, so I'm not going to go through them here. Um, but this is one way that you may have answered it. Now, let's continue to the connect. So, um, it says, Jill has eight donuts to share equally among five people. How much will each person get? So here's another question that's similar to the one above, but um, the numbers are a little bit more difficult. So there's two different ways that we could solve this. The first way is to draw a picture, sort of like what I did above. Um, and the second way is to do division. Okay, so looking at the first way of using pictures, what we would do is we know we have eight donuts, so here's eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we give each person as many whole donuts as we can, um, trying to stay equal. So we've got one, two, three, four, five donuts here. Okay, so that me and there's five people, so that means each person gets at least one whole donut, and we have three left over. We have to divide these equally. Okay, so how I would do that is, since I know that there are five people, I would divide each of the donuts into uh, five pieces. So I would divide this donut into five pieces, this one into five pieces, and this one into five pieces. Okay. Now, I know you probably wouldn't actually do that if you had three donuts and you're going to cut them because everyone would get little tiny bites. But for the purposes of solving this problem, um, this is the easiest way. Okay, so five pieces each donut. Here they are. I've divided them up so each one has five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if I were to count that up, I'd five, ten, fifteen. So that means that um, there are fifteen fifths. 15 fifths. Okay, now fifths, this is an important number to have because since there are five people and we divide this, each one of these into five pieces, that means that we're going to be able to divide this evenly no matter what. So since there are 15 pieces and there are five people, we would go 15 and divide those by five. Now I could count them out like I showed you with the apples. Or if I know what 15 divided by five is, which I know my multiplication facts, so I know that that is three. So that means that each person gets three-fifths of a leftover donut. Okay, so they get three of these little bites of the donut plus one of these. 
Now that would look like this if I were to, to divide up these pieces. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five. Five people get three pieces each of each of the donuts. Okay, and they get also get one one donut. So that means that um, each person gets one whole donut and then um, three out of five pieces of another donut. Okay, this donut, since it was divided into five pieces, the other two are just imaginary here then that makes this fraction three-fifths. Okay, so three-fifths, that's right here. Then we need to make it an equivalent fraction if we want to turn it into a decimal, because to turn a fraction into a decimal, we need to have the denominator as either a five or a 10. And then we, and then we can figure it out from there, um, or I guess 100 as well. Okay, and five works because then we can turn that into a 10 easily, and we can turn uh, uh, I guess several other numbers into a hundred as well. Those are the easy ones to work with. So since three-fifths is equal to six-tenths, if I multiply both top and bottom by two, six out of ten, okay, that'd be like cutting each of these pieces in half again. So they would still get the same amount of donut, they would just be in smaller bite sizes. Okay, so six-tenths, and then we know that six-tenths is the same as zero decimal six. We did that before. You should you should know this um, part already. Okay. So since this donut part right here is zero decimal six as a decimal, then we can say that each person gets one donut plus zero point six of another donut, and we could write that as one point six donuts. One decimal six. Remember, this wouldn't be a three because you can't just decide that three is the decimal when five is the bottom. You can only do that when the bottom is a or a 10 or 100. <clears throat> okay, so that's one, one way to solve that problem. The other way is to divide. And I wouldn't say either one is easier than the other. It's just uh, your preference. So you're going to use uh, whichever one works best for you. But let's go through them both. Okay. So if I'm dividing, then I sort of long divide, but it's it's really, really short, so I don't even know if you could call it long dividing. But um, we know that eight donuts is shared equally among five people, so that means we're dividing eight, uh, into, or eight divided by five. So that means eight, the eight goes under the little doohickey here, the little division symbol, and that's the first number which always goes under the symbol. And then five goes on the outside. Okay, so five goes into eight one time. Five times one is five. Then we subtract the two. That's three um, with a remainder of one. You could also just think of this as five goes into eight one time, and then there's three left three left over. You don't necessarily have to do this long way for short numbers like this. But either way, you're going to figure out that there's a remainder of three. Three donuts left. Okay, what? Everyone gets one donut with a remainder of three donuts. Okay, um, the the three leftover overs, the three leftovers, are shared equally among five people. Now this is sort of where the picture is the same. Okay, uh, we could write this as three divided by five because there's three donuts and we have to give them to five people. So three divided by five. And you can write any division statement as a fraction. You just take the first number in the division, uh, write a line under it, and then put the second number. So three divided by five as a fraction is exactly the same as three over five. There's no difference between those two things. In fact, this little uh, line, this fraction line, means divide. Okay. Um, so, hopefully you're with me so, so far. Um, after we figure out that 3 fifths is the fraction, then we can write 1 remainder 3 as 1 and 3 fifths, right? 1 remainder 3 is here, and then um, there's 3 left over, and we need to give it to 5 people, so 3 divided by 5 is 3 fifths. So 1 and 3 fifths more. And then any division statement can be written as a fraction, and that's what I said up there. Is three over five is like three over is three or three divided by five is like three over five. Okay, so and again this could be again written as 
one decimal six if we did the same steps as above because three over five can be turn into six over ten and then six over ten can turn into zero decimal six and each person gets one donut so they get 1.6 donuts uh, rewind that and watch it again if that was confusing it might make more sense the second time if you're good um, this is what you're going to do there's a bunch of practices uh, first you're going to write the following as a fraction okay um, and then you're going to write the following as a division statement so there's a few to practice here um, and then you're going to divide and show the remainder as a fraction and as a decimal okay and I've made it so that it'll work out easily uh, with your uh, de denominator that you need to have okay so um, pause the video and go through if you're stuck then please just watch the first of each section. Like watch the first of this and then do the other ones and watch the first of this and do the other ones. But if you can, think you can do it without me explaining the first ones, then please do so. Anyways, pause the video and play again once you're finished. Okay, so the first part, uh, you're going to see this quite a bit in the beginning of your assignment and it's extremely easy. So like I said, the first number is the top fraction the bottom number is the bottom fraction. Wait, 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 wait. The first number is not a five. First number is a four, so we should probably write four. So four sixths. And technically that could be reduced to two thirds. Don't worry if you didn't get that part. Um, same with this one actually, six, six ninths. Be six over nine. Six divided by nine, six over nine, that's the same thing. You could reduce this to one third, in fact. And this last one, I tried to trick you, but you should get two over ten would be your division, or you could reduce this to one fifth. Don't worry too much about the division or uh, about the reducing um, for the purposes of this assignment, because it's more about uh, the process of uh, relating to division, but for an added challenge, if this is really easy for you, then reduce. Okay. Write the following as a division statement here. So this is just working backwards. So I take the, the top number, 17, and divide it by the bottom number. Done. 14 divided by 3. 3 divided by 13. It's quite straightforward, pretty easy. Top number divided by the bottom number. Numerator divided by denominator. Okay, and last section here, divide and show the remainder as a fraction and as a decimal. So first we need to divide 9 by 5. So we could do uh, this way. So 5 goes into 9 one time. 5 times 1 is 5. Subtract these. There's 4 left over. Uh, so I have a 1 remainder 4. Now remember the fraction would be, so one is all by itself, and then we'd have four, and then it goes over whatever number is on the outside of the uh, division doohickey thing. So be four over five would be my fraction. Okay, and then it also asks for a decimal. So remember that four fifths is equal to eight tenths, if I times both of them by two. Four times two is eight, five times two is 10. Remember, I want 10 because that's easy to turn into a decimal. That's 0 decimal 8. So then I would just replace the 4 fifths with decimal 8. So I've got 1 decimal 8. So there's my answer for that one. If you haven't done B, please do it. But if you have, then please watch uh, up here. So same thing as over before. I put 23 under because it's the first number. 10 goes on the outside. 10 goes into 2 no times, but it goes into 23 twice. 10 times 2 is 20. When I subtract those, I get 3. So that means that I've got a remainder of 3 left over. So uh, two, 10 goes into 23 two whole times, and then uh, a remainder of 3 is left over from the 23. 
Can you remember to make a fraction, we take the remainder and put it over the number on the outside. So we've got 2 and then we've got 3 over 10. So that's how many times if we want this as a fraction. Lucky us, this is already a 10. So all we need to do is 2 decimal in the top number. Get rid of that 10 and we're good to go. 2 decimal 3. Okay. Uh, it might be more complicated than your, than, or you might be making it more complicated than it needs to be. But it's pretty straightforward once you uh, understand sort of how it works. Your assignment then is page 195 to 196. Number 1 to 6, 8, 9, and 11. Number 1 to 6 are going to go really fast. They're like uh, the first parts of the practice on this. Okay, so it seems like it's larger than it is, but you still need to work hard. Bye.